Hi everyone, I'm here in Georgetown, Ontario, standing on this newly transformed front entrance. The homeowners hired a Unilock authorized contractor to design and construct a driveway, walkway, porch overlay, and garden planters. We were here on site from start to finish, from the moment the crew broke ground to the final laying of sod. We also spoke with industry experts on the latest technologies in base stabilization, construction altimeters, and sand and edge restraints. This series is designed to provide you with insights on new and creative techniques on paper and wall installations, methods to help you maximize your efficiencies on a project, and more. So stay tuned. Throughout several episodes, we'll show you how Unilock is the one partner you can count on for quality and innovative products, on-site support, and how to elevate your operations to a whole new level. Hey Mike, thanks for joining me here. Uh, Mike, you invented the U-Level, didn't you? That's right, Jason, thank you for having me. No problem. Can you tell me a little bit what a U-Level is? Certainly, a U-Level is a precision construction altimeter. It's a lot faster and easier to use than a laser. Basically, you've got a digital readout with the U-Level that anyone can read as opposed to a story pole, which is very difficult for some people to figure. Story pole, what's a story pole? Well, a story pole is used with a laser. It's basically a tape measure on a pole, on a stick. Uh, the laser beam will come out at a straight line and wherever it hits that story pole is your initial starting point. It may be 29 and 7 sixteenths of an inch. As you move the story pole around the job site, if the ground goes down, your story pole gets longer, which is very confusing. If you want to add three and a half inches depth over a certain uh, grade, you've got to do that either in your head or on a piece of paper. It's, it's, it's fairly complicated, actually. And you don't have to do that with the U-Level? Absolutely not. Uh, with the U-Level, you take and zero the display wherever you want your base or your benchmark to be. And from that point forward, you get a reading. You're three inches low, it'll say minus three inches. If you're two and a half inches high, It'll say two and a half inches high. Basically, I had a, a 10-year-old girl level base grade in a swimming pool. Yeah, wow. with her dad in the excavator. It was a family project. They were really proud of her. A 10-year-old. That's amazing. It was. So obviously, U-Level is not the only product on the market. Can you tell me what separates yours from maybe a competitor's? For one thing, the tubing. Our tubing has a lightweight mineral oil in it. It's a very durable tubing. I've got a video of a skid steer running over it loaded with gravel. So you don't have to worry about damaging our tubing. The competition, you better not step on it. With our tubing, if you actually cut it completely in two, you can replace the fluid in it with Johnson's baby oil. Now, I made it that way intentionally. Competition has to go back to Escondido, California, and you're done until it comes back. You're out a couple of hundred bucks, and it may be gone from us. And I understand there's an app on the App Store available for the U-Level? Absolutely, and, and this is where all the magic of U-Level comes, is when you start tying in with the app. The two are connected via Bluetooth, so everything that you see in the app, you're going to see in the level and vice versa. Uh, we have two different ways of mapping. You can take a photograph of a job site. If you've got a drone image, it's gold. So you drop all of your readings into the app, into this image as you're walking the property. Now the app not only saves the, uh, all this information in JPEG format, but the app is creating your X, Y, and Z data for upload into programs like UVision. It's just a hassle-free way of moving to the, to the next, next step. So it's not only a great tool for taking surveys, it's also going to help speed up your designs. Oh, it's a game changer. Even after the design is finished and back in the hands of the contractors and their buildings, for a change of work order, you can take a photograph, drop all of your readings in, and send it into your design team without even going into the office. You just email everything directly to them. Mike, that was great. Thank you very much again for coming. Absolutely, Jason. It's always a pleasure, buddy. Hi, I'm Daniel Pacheco, owner of Scenic Stone Landscape and Design, Inc. I've been a Unilock authorized contractor for the last eight years in business for 10. We're here in Georgetown working on a geoengineered driveway, incorporating drive grid, drive cell, uh, open grade base, three quarter clear stone. We're gonna be here in the next couple of days showing you guys how we install this base. To be honest with you, the base is almost as beautiful as the top surface is gonna be. Um, and we are introducing a new product from Unilock as well that I'm excited about.
Hey Mike, we're back on site at this uh, driveway project and the excavation has started. Yes. We were here doing a survey earlier. Is that the end of the U-level for this job? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, like I say, whenever you connect the U-level with the app, that's, that's where the really, some of the really cool magic comes in. So we actually map the site, we upload that into the U-Vision program and we design the site from those ground elevations, which getting the ground elevations into your design program is usually the very difficult part. And with the U-Level, it's kind of standardized. Basically, just about anybody can take those readings and send them to a designer and they have the data they need to start designing. Right, you know, and you bring up a good point that it's not always the construction crew taking the survey. So how does U-Level help with that? Like, is there a way to share the information with everybody? Oh, absolutely. When it's tied into U-Vision in particular, you have all of your data recorded in the app as you're taking this. Then you email that data into the U-Vision design program. So you can have one uh, crew that's completely disassociated with the, the build team or the designer. With a project like this that's more flat, it's not as critical as it is when you have large height differentials on, on a particular property. All right, well, let's get in the hole and start checking our depths. All right, Mike, we're uh, down in the excavated area of this driveway. Here's another opportunity that we can use the U-Level. Okay, so we, we've got our benchmark set here. We're gonna hold the little zero button down, five seconds, you hear a little beep, and we go to zero. We're gonna drop down here, and you said we wanted uh, 12, 12, inches, inches. 12 yeah. inches lower. We've got 13 and a 16th. Now, we're gonna hit the percent of slope button. We're gonna double check that first. Uh, U-Level comes in extremely handy for double checking your work. We can check this and be done before you get a laser set up. As we're walking down, the, the augmented reality in the phone is actually measuring the distance and direction that we're going. The level is measuring the height. Like I say, the, uh, the level itself is an industrial computer. So if you've got a level that's five or six years old, you just upgrade the firmware and you've got everything, the one that rolled off the line yesterday had. So we hit our percent of slope there. We've got just a little over 3% of slope, so we're doing pretty good on this. So we just finished our excavation here for this geoengineered driveway that we're building up here. As we finished the excavation here, we ran into a little bit of an issue, um, and you get that every once in a while when you're doing some landscape projects here, but the issue is we have some soft ground, years of buildup of moisture underneath the concrete that was here. So we've contacted contractor services from Unilock, and Jason's been a big help there. To remedy the situation, what we're gonna be doing here is extending drive cell at the base of the, uh, the subgrade here in this particular area. So we're gonna extend it by a full tile to stabilize this area. So you can see here how soft it is, as opposed to continuing that excavation all the way down, what we're gonna be doing is just adding that additional drive cell to remedy the situation. Now that we got the uh, subgrade compacted, what we're installing right now is the drive grid geogrid. Uh, we're gonna lay that throughout the base of the driveway here before we add our open grade base system here. As you can see, we've overlapped the sides, bringing the, the drive grid up the sides. We're also gonna bring it up the foundation of the garage floor. And what we've also added here is non-woven geotextile cloth around the perimeter of the excavation, and that's gonna just prevent the migration of native soil with the open grade base in the driveway. Hey Daniel, I noticed uh, this angle iron. This is kind of interesting. Do you uh, mind giving me the rundown on why you guys are using that? Yeah, um, so typically most failures in the driveway happen near the foundation of the garage floor, just overall settlement over the years. So what we're doing here is we've added an inch and a half stainless steel angle iron, which is gonna be resting right underneath the second tier of drive cell. Uh, and as you notice here, we already have some drive cell on the ground right now. Um, that's just additional insurance. Again, doing that second layer by the garage floor where it tends to kind of sink over time. So you're really just trying to prevent like differential settlement that's right. between the two surfaces. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. Just wanted to take an opportunity while on site here to talk a little bit about the aggregate we're using for this base. It's not average size three-quarter clear. It's a, a little bit of different. You have a few different sizes in here. 
and that's gonna help with uh, compaction of it. It's gonna really sit down very nicely once you go with your compactor. Also, the advantage of um, a clear stone is its permeability. So I'm just gonna dump some water here and you're gonna see that it goes right down in there. There is approximately 50% void space in this product. It allows the water to sit there even in a freeze condition and not cause any frost heat. Hey Phil, thanks for joining us on site. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm a geostructural engineer. I have my own company called Persia Geosolutions. I specialize in reinforced soil structures. So that's retaining walls, steep slopes, and pavement structures, which brings us to this project here. I got involved to design the pavement structure here and actually do some reinforcing and stabilization. That's the key on this project. I see you brought this cool tool here. Can you give me a little demo? Certainly, yeah. This is a soil probe and I bring it to job sites to help me get an idea of how strong the soils are. It's, it's a relative to how it feels. So what we have here is the 19 millimeter clear stone. It's an OPSS spec, so it's a standard provincial spec. It's, it's well graded material. It's got larger particles all the way down to smaller particles, so it compacts well. So I'm going to demonstrate with the soil probe how this uncompacted material is. So I'm just going to push right through and you see how effortlessly that went down. You know, almost two feet it went in. And then when we move over to the driveway and see how it compares to being compacted, there'd be a significant difference. And we'll also check the native soil too so we can get an idea what the subgrade strength is. So you have the soil underneath and then the soils that you're actually building your pavement structure with. installed the three-quarter clear stone, about six inches of it. We've used the 28-inch diesel plate compactor to compact everything in its place. So we, we do have some minor touch-ups here. That's where you're seeing the markings on the driveway. Um, we have some low spots that we're going to top up to ensure that when after we lay down the drive cell, we're going to have that inch and a half for our bedding layer of HPV on top of that drive cell. Um, and then obviously the good areas are marked G, low areas are marked L. Um, this area up along the garage floor, you can see this is where we install the two tile wide of the drive cell, right. as that lower section of the drive cell. And it's tied into the area where we found was soft on our subgrade. As you can see now, it's strong, it's sturdy. Oh, okay. And this is before we're adding the whole other layer of drive cell onto the, onto the floor here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. 